Here is a tutorial about relays, what they are, how they work and what they do. And this is leading on to building a latching relay circuit. Lift buttons used latching relay circuits. One push of the button connects two terminals together, then a relay keeps the call active and the call button lit. Here you can see the car call buttons in the lift and the corresponding relay latching in the lift motor room when the button is pressed. Nowadays this is done by microprocessors. Now here is a relay. In order to be able to understand this, I need to go through a few circuit basics. This is really simple stuff, a battery connected to a light bulb. And to turn the circuit off, you can cut the cable if you wish, or you can join the cable into a switch. Now all the switch does is it joins them two wires together. Inside the switch are two terminals, which join together when the switch is on to allow the current to pass. So essentially when this switch is on, you are just joining them two wires back together again. And when you turn it off, you are breaking the circuit. If you look inside the switch, there are two terminals. This is a symbol for a switch. When the switch is on, the two terminals join together, the circuit is made and when you turn the switch off, the circuit is broken and off goes the bulb. Now I'm gonna have two switches and I'm gonna wire them in a parallel configuration. In this circuit design, either one of the switches can light up the bulb. If I configure it this way, this is called a series circuit. Now both switches must be on for the circuit to be made and for the bulb to light. Now let's move towards what a relay does. Instead of the bulb, we're gonna have an electromagnet. This electromagnet operates its own switch. When the electromagnet is energized, this switch turns on. Now this is essentially what a relay does. It's an electromagnet operating a switch. Let's look inside this relay and we can see this relay has four separate switches. All these switches activate together when you energize the electromagnet. There are different types of relays. This one has an electromagnet which you connect to the mains. There's relays on circuit boards. This relay has a diagram on the side. It has three separate switches and the A1 and A2 is the electromagnet. Inside there are those three switches and when the electromagnet is on, they all switch over together. This is a special relay. It's called a timer relay. There are switches on it so you can set different programs. On the side is a dial so you can set the time. And this one is set so that when you apply the power, the relay turns on and then off after the preset time. If you change the switches, you can make it so that when you connect the power, the relay doesn't turn on until your preset time. Relays can be used to interface to the outside world. Here's one of our door controllers. These are relays and we connect our locks into these terminals here and the controller decides when the relay is on or off. So let's go back to the battery a switch and an electromagnet. When we push the switch, the electromagnet energizes and up comes the key. Let's turn the electromagnet around. Now we're gonna have that operating a switch. When we push the switch at the top of the diagram, it now energizes the electromagnet and the electromagnet operates its own switch. Now relays generally have more than one switch inside them. So now when I press the switch, the electromagnet operates two switches and these can be used for different things. So let's move away from the circuit diagram and move on to a bit of practical. Here's the relay base with the relay unplugged. I'm now gonna connect the battery to the electromagnet. The positive wire goes through the base up to the electromagnet on this side. And then on the other side, it goes to the other side of the electromagnet to make this turn on. Connecting these two wires to a battery now energizes the electromagnet and causes the switches on the relay to change. And here's where the button included. Now let's make a simple bulb circuit. Now I want the relay to join these two wires together when the electromagnet is on. To connect these two wires to the relay, I must connect it into the base. And that will connect it up to the switch on the relay itself. Now let's follow this through. 
If I connect the battery directly to the bulb, it turns on. Let's follow this wire through onto the relay base. The bulb comes on. That goes up to the terminal on the relay. I'm now connecting it on the other side of the relay switch. Now this will only connect to the bottom terminal when it turns on, like this. So let's wire that in properly. Then when I press the relay, the terminals join together and the bulb comes on. Let's go back to our circuit diagram. Here is our bulb with the wires shown in purple here. When I press the switch, the electromagnet turns on and that connects the bulb to the battery. And here is that circuit in the real world. I can press the button or I can activate the relay manually. Now my relay has two switches. I've used one for the bulb and now I'm going to use the other one. I'm going to use this other switch to bypass my push button. This is a latching relay circuit. Let's put this into the real world and to begin with I'm going to put a link wire across the switch. The current now bypasses my switch via this wire. You can follow this in the diagram by the squiggly green line. If I cut the wire, the switch is no longer bypassed and the relay turns off. So these two wires, when joined together, are bypassing my switch. I'm going to wire these into the second unused switch on the relay. Remember the first one is operating the light bulb. So this is my second route. The yellow wire joins to one side of the relay. When the relay turns on, the two yellow wires effectively join together and bypass the switch, as if you pressed it. This diagram starts off with the button at the top pressed. That connects power to the electromagnet. The electromagnet operates the switches. The second switch is now used for my latching relay circuit. The push button can now be released and the electric current can now find a new route to keep that electromagnet energized. So the switch on the relay has now bypassed the push switch. This is a latching relay. And here it is, the latching relay. The only problem is I can't turn it off. So I'm gonna pull the contacts apart manually like this. And of course I can cause the relay to latch by pressing it manually like this. So this is how I am activating the call buttons in this lift motor room. This is an example diagram of a call button in a lift. There is a bulb connected across the electromagnet which comes on when the electromagnet is energized. It can be drawn this way. The gray area at the top is the button and the lamp of the call button. I press the button, the relay latches and the bulb stays on when the button is released. Now one thing we don't have is a way to turn off that relay. Now you could just cut the wire, but it would be more sensible to fit a separate switch in here to do that. And when you turn off that switch, it cuts the power to the electromagnet and the latching relay circuit de-energizes. If this latching relay circuit is a call button in a lift, then the unlatching of this relay is normally controlled elsewhere, normally when the lift arrives at the floor. So now a separate circuit has to control the unlatching and we're going to use another relay. This relay is used to unlatch the first relay. You can see how complicated these relay circuits can become. Nowadays this is all done by microprocessors. The spare switches on these relays can be connected to anything. In an old lift motor room these relays form part of the core logic. Circuit diagrams don't normally contain a picture of a battery. Instead, you just refer to the terminals. So let's redesign this circuit diagram a little bit. Let's remove the battery and put the terminals here instead. Now I suppose you could say that the battery is still there, but instead we are referring to the positive and negative terminals throughout the diagram. This keeps the diagram neater, especially as it grows and gets more complicated. All the types of switches in a relay are now shown on my diagram. I'm now going to connect up the left hand terminals to a positive supply. 
This feeds power up to all the switches on the relay. Let's connect a bulb to each one of the contacts on the right hand side. Now none of these bulbs will light because they need a connection to the negative supply of the battery. Now you could draw it like this, but the diagram is starting to get a bit untidy and there's no need because what you can do is you could say that the negative supply connects here. Now each bulb needs a path to the negative terminal. Now we don't need to do it like this because what we can do is we can join them all together and join them as a group to the negative terminal. Now let's turn the relay on. I press my switch, the electromagnet gets energised and that in turn operates all the switches on this relay. Some of the bulbs become disconnected and turn off and the other bulbs that were disconnected now find a path to the positive supply and turn on. I'm now going to show you the three different types of switches that you can have on a relay. Each relay terminal has a name. This switch shown here is the most common to find on a relay. It has a common and the common terminal connects to the normally closed when the relay is turned off and when the relay is turned on the common connects to the normally open. These are called normally closed contacts and the other switches are called normally open contacts. Now the relays in this express lifts motor room have terminals that open when the relay turns on and terminals that close. Different relays have a different amount of switches on them. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial to a latching relay circuit and remember this is all moving towards explaining how this works because I want to show you the principle of how an old lift relay system works. Not forgetting using relay logic a call is a latched relay.